over 300 international high school graduates and college students from the U.S., Canada, and Europe, among others, dropped everything back home in order to immigrate to Israel and enlist the IDF as volunteers. Well, we're here. All of us are here to do uh, the same thing, and that's join the Army. We come from all around the world, especially around uh, the United States and Canada, um, to do something more with our lives, not just uh, going to college. To live somewhere and to have a country that will accept you no matter what, in good times and in bad, you have to give something back. So all these young people are coming here to, to give something of themselves to defend the country that they really believe in. I just feel like it's the right thing to do. I see myself as Israeli and I shouldn't have special treatment and I should be serving like everyone else and I love Israel. I was adopted from China when I was two years old and I converted Orthodox and so it's sort of all I've ever known is being Jewish so when people ask me well what was it like when you weren't Jewish I'm like I was two I don't really know. The army was a shock to me too as well as all my family and friends um, but it was the right decision for me because I could never feel fully assimilated if I didn't do the army so it's a necessary it's necessary to do it for me. Green Sabah will be with you wherever you may go. These young and extremely motivated people will begin a three-month Garin Tzabar preparatory program ahead of the military. When the program is over, they will all enlist. I want to do OKETS. Um, it's a, OKETS is the K-9 unit. It's um, an elite unit. It's one of the only elite uni units a woman can get into. But it's really hard, and if I don't get into that, I'll end up in Karakal, which is the female combat unit. I want to push myself, and that's what this entire journey is about, is finding out who I am and what I can do when I put my mind to it. Immigrating to a new country can be scary, especially if the purpose of the move is to join the army, which comes with its own set of challenges. I was at first, but I feel really prepared, to be honest. We'll see. I mean, it's definitely new. One thing at a time. Well, we just got here, um, still swept up in all the emotions, the excitement of being here. There'll become a time where, where we'll see what happens. My biggest fear is the language barrier. My Hebrew is... Okay, it's not great, so McVeigh alone, yay. Um, but my fear of anything else is not strong enough to stop me from doing what I believe I have to do. Most of the parents of these youngsters supported their children's move, despite the separation and the fear. I know I'm going to miss him, I'm going to be worried, but I hope for him. It's going to be okay, it's no problem. Man. You know it's going to be okay. I know everything. We have a very big family, very uh, united family. I know they're going to be with him, support him, help him, anything, any help. Of course, I'm going to come to visit more than I used to. My son is American, but he's Jewish and he's Israeli in his heart. In a welcome ceremony for the young recruits, great appreciation was displayed by the Israeli government. This is a whole different Zionism, a modern Zionism, and I want to wish them, because I know that yesterday and the day before, when they just arrived in the country, they felt that the vision is becoming a reality. So I wish them to never be disappointed, and I'm sure that they came here to change the world, and we salute them. We love you guys. Good luck and enjoy Israel. Enjoy your new life. It's quite a commitment for these youngsters to make, considering most will be lone soldiers here in Israel. However, it is estimated that despite the difficulty, about 70% of these young army recruits will ultimately stay in Israel, even once their service is over. For JN1, I'm Sivan Raviv, Israel.